Hello everyone. Today I've been sent a link to an interview to Jeffrey Boyer Chapman by one of our users on the Discord. Thank you so much, Gothboy UK. Apparently Jeffrey spilled a ton of tea about what really happened during season one of Canada's Drag Race. Do you remember the outrage? Do you remember the videos? Do you remember the petitions to remove them? Do you remember that media avalanche that hit Jeffrey last year? Yes, because before we start taking a look about what he actually said in this interview, and by the way, I will leave a link to the article in the description so you can listen to me, but if I were you, I would go to read it yourself. I would like all of you to remind you of all these kind people, my colleagues here on YouTube, who offered for many, many months their coverage of the situation. What I can best describe as the usual bunch of bullshit that tries to pass itself as proper information, you know, that thing that we see so many often, which is so devoid of any kind of serious research, any kind of understanding of how production actually works, and God forbid empathy. We cannot afford empathy for anyone, not when it's in the way of making some good old money. So I'm not faulting all the media backlash by our usual erudite minds on Twitter and on social media and on Reddit and wherever. But what about you, the people who made a video in here about him? What about all of you who cashed a very nice check on his misfortune? So guess what's going to happen now? You get to make another check apologizing about being such a dick to this man. Now, if you're a long-time subscriber on this channel, why do you think we never made a video about this? Why do you think I never talked about this? Well, <laughs> I hope now you found your answer. Anyway, what really happened to Jeffrey Boyer Chapman? Well, apparently he was very close to the producers of US Drag Race. We've seen it appear many different times, both in All-Stars and in regular seasons. So in this interview, he explains that he was under the impression that somehow he knew what was going to happen. In reality, once he arrived there, he found a very different group of local producers which had a kind of different attitude about his involvement. Yes, you see, because Jeffrey was going to be high candy. That's it. <laughs> That's what he was told. Can you imagine this? You think you are signing a contract. You think you are representing for something. Maybe it could be a race as an African-American. It could be because you're a gay man. It could be whatever you want. No, you are there to be beautiful and to be mean. Yes, because according to Jeffrey, not only it was suggested the thing that he had to say in his earpiece, he was also asked to record mean things that then can be edited through the usual load of editing magic in order to make him look like a complete dick. Because apparently you need a dick in the panel of judges. So even if they had nothing negative to say, something negative had to be added. So, Jeffrey was not only going to be the eye candy for the queens, for the viewers, you know, a token in there. He also had to be the sassy judge on the panel, and he says, and I quote, being told that from a white person, ever, as a black person, is like a dog whistle. It's like what it said of black women and black queer men, meaning that you're the odd-headed, opinionated one, who is going to tell it like it is and not give a shit about what anybody has to say. And that's not who I am. End quote. Yes, that's not who he is. And apparently no one could imagine that, could you? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just find it so fucking rewarding because we didn't publish any video in that. <laughs> Because when this thing exploded, I looked at it and I thought, I smell a ton of bullshit. And I didn't publish anything about it. I didn't discuss anything about Canada's Drag Race. I didn't discuss anything about what was going on with Jeffrey. I just mind my business. And you know why? Because I wasn't sure of what the fuck was going on. And finally, we get some payback. <laughs> You know, what's sad about this situation is that a ton of people made a ton of money out of what happened to Jeffrey. And now they are all going to line up, all of them apologizing, if they even try to own what they said. But mostly, they will probably, you know, forget that anything happened, because this is how it works. 
everything is exploitable. Exploit everything. What Mama Ru taught all of us is rigorously applied, especially here on YouTube, where God forbid that we show the bare minimum of respect, objectivity, or empathy toward anyone that we have a problem with. Yes, because guess what? You can have a problem with someone and still be objective and retain your empathy. You know? <laughs> That's what usually happens if you don't chase money all of the time. You actually have time to realize that the world is made of human people, not villains. Mm -hmm. So Jeffrey continues with this interview spilling a lot of other shit that, frankly, I will let you go and you can read it yourself. You can find it out yourself. You don't need my seal of approval to tell you that he had to endure a ton of bullshit. And to all of the people who are going to say, yes, but he signed off for that, well... Good God. Yes, yes, the world is shit. Just because everybody shits on the street doesn't mean that you have to as well, do you? And if you think that he actually had a choice of saying these things, because he said all of those things after all, didn't he? Well, yes, he could have avoided saying them. He also wouldn't have a career anymore, because guess what? That's how the industry works. If you are difficult to work with, you will never work again. So you need to take it up the ass like a man, shut the fuck up, do what you are told to be doing, and then you will continue having work. You might not like it, but this is how show business works. So... I am very pleased by this situation. I hope the best for Jeffrey. He is not going to come back for season two of Canada's Drag Race. He actually uh, signed off on another project. And uh, for all of those who made a video shit-talking him and made a profit out of this whole situation without ever having a second thought about what the fuck was really going on, I'm giving you a challenge. What about showing us how much you actually earned from those videos and then donating it to a charity. Hmm? How about that? And for everyone else, if you have an inordinate amount of money, like one or three dollars that you would like to throw us our way, of course, we have a patron and you can support more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to the patrons who already support the channel. And I will see you very soon. Nothing matters more than your own personal gain. Fuck other people. If you dream of exploiting everything and believe nature's not worth anything If you sign the lease, all your wildest dreams, they will come true, they will come true If you think exploiting drug is not enough, all these queens, they deserve to get it rough Just ignore the tweets and all your wildest dreams